So hello, this is my um, version of the Jack Frost hood -y hoodie or sweatshirt or whatever you call them. Um, so yes, I, this is just in progress. So this is what I've done so far, which is sleeves. So, so far and then hood. Ooh. Ooh. And it goes all the way down here, and then also the back side. And then I did a little on the sleeves, but not a lot. It's very light. I don't think you can see it in this lighting. So this is just the first layer. And of course, I've never made one of these before, so I don't know if this is going to turn out looking good or not. But, so what I did for here is white mist fabric paint and get a big bottle if you can because I've so far used two bottles for this and I'm going to have to get more and then I also used um, glittering crystal and it is this type of fabric paint um, and so yeah so get a big bottle of it if you can and this is the result. And what I did was I, what I did, I took a small sponge and I put the paint on the sponge and then I blotted it on. And it probably took me three hours so far with many distractions because I've been watching two movies as I've been doing it. Um, so, oh, and then of course, and I put some on that too. So this is the sponge I used. So, I think it's made out of that same foam that those orthopedic mattresses are made out of, but I'm not sure. I got it with um, some cheap face painting kit for Halloween. What I do is I take a piece of paper and make sure that the fabric paint is already coming out a little so I don't get surprised by how much fabric paint comes out and then I start out by just doing um, pretty straight line maybe with a few jags um, out to where I want it to stop and then I'll add in some stuff that kind of look like tree branches with little branches coming out and you want to try to make it the farther out you get down here the more skinny you want it to look and small I messed up and it's totally okay to make them overlap And then I like to do double ones sometimes, it makes it, emphasizes it more. Well, that looks pretty good. So that was with this, just the silver, so when it dries it will be completely clear, except for the silver sparkles. And so then we do that, and then we take the white mist fabric paint again. And then you make sure that some of it's coming out. Yes. And then I put it over the main, the main line that we started out with. And then the ones I want to emphasize to stand out, 
I might put it over those ones just to like give it a bit more depth. Like that one, and let's do this one. Take our toothpick. And we're just going to take the paint and push it outwards. And give it these tiny little spikes. And I usually only do it on the main ones again. You can connect it to the other branches. Oops. And I like to make the edges pointy, so I'll just run my toothpick and make sure they end in points instead of giant blobs of little paint. Like that. Yeah. And this is helpful, like, because when you have, when you make a mistake and you put too much paint on one part, you can always use the toothpick and just make it into a point. So that's, that's what I do. And you just repeat over and over and over again. That's the pattern so far. That's what I've done so far. It takes a long time, so give yourself time. I, I basically just practiced a lot and messed up a lot, and that was the final kind of pattern I liked. And then I messed around with different types of designs. And I ended up kind of with that spiky design. I tried different types of colors with the fabric paint or trying to mix them together. And so I liked the white mist and just sparkles, silver sparkles the best. And occasionally I've been using some of that, some of this uh, glittering crystal fabric paint and when it dries it dries completely see-through um, except for the sparkles kind of like the silver paint but it's it's not as like intense as the silver sparkles um, so I'll just do those occasionally when I feel like it because I researched actual icicle designs and it's very hard to actually make it look like that with fabric paint. So this is more like a fancy version of ice. I don't know. This was my attempt at actual ice. Didn't turn out so great. So I went for the cracked ice look. Um, and let's see, oh yes. So this is the type of fabric paint I have been using. This is this, just a glitter, the silver glitter. And that's what it, and it's called Silver Agent Plate. Plata. And I got all of this stuff at Joann's, except for the sweatshirt, which I bought at Sports 5. Don't get it there. It was $30. You can get it at like, I don't, probably Target, you can get it probably, I've, I've researched it and I've heard like people have gotten it for like five dollars at other stores, so get it as cheap as you can, don't make a sweatshirt, it just takes too much time, and then you have to dye it, and that, that's a whole nother process you have to do. Oh, I finished it, um, so here's the finished product basically. And this is what it looks like up close. It's very bright and sparkly. La la la. And so yeah. So I did it on the pockets and a little on the outside between the ear. And I did it on the sleeves. And I did it on the head. It goes all the way around. And then I also did it on the back. Um, 
and there it is. Jack Frost sweatshirt complete. Yay. Um, I really liked how it turned out. It looks really good. And I got a lot of compliments at FanimeCon, so that was awesome. Um, so yeah, it uh, took about a week if you work on it 24-7, basically, yeah. Um, and some people do put it on the sleeves, but I didn't end up doing that. And also, technically, Jack Frost has this stitch that goes like this, and it goes down here, I think. No, no, no. It goes, it goes up here, and then around to the back, and then down the back like that. And I have not done that yet, and I'm not sure if I am going to do that. But we'll see. Um, so, yes, it's done. Cool. All right, bye. Hope that was useful. All right, bye bye.